Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Jim Hoffman. I am pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church here in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, it's time for our daily devotion, and so we're going to take a couple moments and just greet folks as they uh, sign in this morning, and then we'll take a few moments to just spend in devotion with one another. I'm going to take an opportunity as people kind of uh, join to just recognize them. Um, and we'll look forward to having some folks that will be a part of our devotion time with us. We've been doing this for several weeks now during our stay at home, stay safe, COVID-19, quarantine, whatever you want to call this period of time. Good morning, Kyle. How are you today? So, as I was, just, I was just talking to someone on the phone and commenting about the things that you start, how long will we continue to be doing this, right? You know, staying at home, doing midday devotions, all that kind of fun stuff. Hi, Linda. Glad to have you with us this morning. Good morning, Jenny. How are you today? Hi, Barbara Larson. Glad you are with us. Barbara, I'm going to use your last name because there's like three of you Barbaras that all join. So, hi, Diane. Glad to have you today. Hi, Jack. Hi, Pat. How are you? How about a retreat? <laughs> That's Kyle. Kyle, how about retreat? How do we retreat, right? All the fun stuff. Barbara and Chris Mueller have joined today. Glad you are with us. Good morning. Hi, Shirley. Good morning to you. As I said, we're going to take a couple minutes. We'll just welcome a couple folks as they, you know, folks as they come and join us. Um, for those of you that want to get prepared, our Bible reading today is going to come from Psalm 29, verses 1 to 11. Hi, Susan. Glad you are with me today and with all of us. So we're going to be reading from Psalm 29, verses 1 to 11, if you want to find your Bible and join me there. So the young lady who is the author of the devotion from um, the upper room, her last name is Swartzentruber. Don't say that one three times too fast. Swartzentruber. She's Ashley Swartzentruber. She's from Ontario. That one took me a moment. I had to read that a couple of times and kind of slowly, phonetically try to figure out how to pronounce that because I don't want to be... I don't want to be too bad at butchering her her last name. But. Uh, hi, Garth and Cherry. Glad to have you today. Glad you're with us. We'll take another 30 seconds or so. I want to make sure that folks have a chance to, to join and, and sign in. Let us know that they're present, and then we'll be ready for our time of devotion together. I want to remind you. <clears throat> excuse me. We're reading from Psalm chapter 29. So if you want to find that, 29th Psalm. So let's go ahead and start with our devotion. Psalm 29 says, You divine beings, give to the Lord. Give to the Lord glory and power. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bow down to the Lord in holy splendor. The Lord's voice is over the waters. The glorious God thunders. The Lord is over the mighty waters. The Lord's voice is strong. The Lord's voice is majestic. The Lord's voice breaks cedar trees. Yes, the Lord shatters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon jump around like a young bull, makes Siron jump around like a young wild ox. The Lord's voice unleashes fiery flames. The Lord's voice shakes the wilderness. Yes, the Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The Lord's voice convulses the oaks, strips the forest bare, but in his temple, everyone shouts glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the floodwaters. The Lord sits enthroned king forever. So let the Lord give strength to his people. Let the Lord bless his people with peace. As I mentioned a moment ago, our author today is from Ontario, Canada. Her name is Ashley Schwarzentruber. And her focus verse was Matthew chapter 6, verse 26. It says, look at the birds of the air. 
They do not sow or reap or stow away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? And here is her devotion. She says, When my concussion symptoms dragged on, I wasn't able to care for my young son or maintain a conversation with my husband for quite some time. I felt useless around the house. I couldn't go to church. I wasn't able to read my Bible. Even praying was difficult. Although God surrounded me with many wonderful people who helped immensely during this time, I still felt cut off from the world and very much alone. I will never forget one beautiful spring day when I was sitting on a rock at the back of our property. Suddenly, I could feel God all around me in the warmth of the sunshine, in the gentle breeze, and through the singing of the birds. When I heard them, the verse above came to me. It seemed as if God were saying, give up all your fears, tears, and anxieties, and just trust me. It still took, ta- still took another three months before I could read my Bible or have a somewhat normal conversation. But every time I broke down crying or felt as if I couldn't handle the stress anymore, I would stop myself and say aloud, I trust you, God. Life has many battles, some larger than others, but God is with us. We can acknowledge that God's ways are greater than ours. Surrendering our lives to the Lord, our God, we can say, I trust you. So today, thought for the day, today and every day, I will say to God, I trust you. I, um, I, I've, I've been lucky, I guess probably fortunate in a lot of different ways. that um, I've not suffered anything um, in this kind of way that has um, caused for me uh, the inability to maybe concentrate on something or be able to do my normal routines in life. Um, you know, this whole staying at home and the quarantine and all that stuff, you know, that's just, it's an interruption. It is not necessarily a struggle um, per se. You know, there's not a lot that we have to do with it that that, that forces our lives um, to be so much different or forces us to have to really struggle for things like being able to concentrate or have a conversation or being able to read something and concentrate in, on it or, you know, anything. Um, so this, this to me is, is foreign because it's not something that I've ever experienced in my own life. And yet I think in our lives there are certain other kinds of struggles that can be there. Right. Uh, There are things that people struggle with fairly consistently. For her, it was the pain and the issue of a head injury, a concussion. Some people, you know, their struggle is more how to make it through life. It's a struggle financially. Some people will struggle through relationships. Some people will struggle through depression. Some people may struggle with other aspects. Right. And and it's that, that constant human struggle that I think we all um, can hold in in dynamic tension and in um, common together because we all have our own struggle of some sort. Um, it may not be dramatic. It may be something that is um, small in, in, in scale to some things and yet it's still our struggle it's still the thing that is our burden that we carry and it's the thing that we are constantly dealing with and wrestling with or trying to make it through most of us we we find that we trust in a lot of our own skill set and our a lot of our own knowledge and probably even a lot of our own power that we have we will be able to try to make it through these things based upon what we do and our effort that we put into it. You know, the whole idea of either we can pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps and overcome or through just sheer will and effort, um, we overcome some of the things that we struggle with. I knew someone a long, long time ago. Um, it was part of my, my life and my past, and 
And I remember they, they were a person that, that smoked and drank beer um, fairly consistently, you know, from teenage and all the way up into their their 30s or so. It was just part of their normal life and everything like that. Something dramatic happened in their world, and they just put both of those things down. And sheer willpower to be able to just stop smoking instantaneously and stop drinking instantaneously. Right? Some people have that and can overcome things in their lives just based upon sheer will. I wonder how many of us, though, think of it more along the lines of not just our own physical and mental acuity uh, and our own physical and mental power, but how many of us are thinking about this from the spiritual aspect as well? What do we do with our spiritual life? What do we do with the power of God and the spirit of God that empowers us to overcome the things in our lives? How often are we leaning into the presence of God and saying, God, I trust you and the power of your spirit to deliver me from whatever it is that I find myself in the middle of, whatever my struggle is? Is there something that you do not have the capability of overcoming on your own? Your own sheer mental will and power isn't doing it for you. Your own capabilities, your own determination just hasn't quite given you the victory that you want over your struggle. Maybe it's time to just simply say, you know what, God, I trust in you. I trust that you will be the one who will surround me and love me. I know that I am more important than the lilies. I am more important than the birds of the air. I am more important than the grass that grows. You love me more than all of creation, and because of that, I know that you have the best intentions for me. And so will you trust in that? Will you put your faith and your trust in God who promises to be with you always? No matter what it is that you're encountering today, and, and maybe it's something that you're just kind of struggling with, and it, it's a constant struggle that's there for you, have you taken the opportunity just simply to place it at the feet of God and to say today, God, I trust that you will be with me in this struggle? And maybe through your power and your spirit, if it's your divine will, deliver me from it, or maybe simply be the one that gives me the strength and the power to be able to persevere through it. I'm not sure what your circumstance is. I'm pretty sure you do. And so let's take a moment to pause and to pray. As we think and we contemplate upon what it means for us to trust that God is with us and that through the power of the Spirit, God can deliver us from the things that we struggle with. Let's take a moment to just pause and to pray together. So, dear God, forgive us when we try to do all these things on our own. Help us to understand that not all of our struggles can be resolved through our own mental power, our own mental acuity, our own physical strength, our own sheer will. That there are things that we should turn to you for guidance and for wisdom and for the strength of your Holy Spirit. So in those things, we turn to you today and we ask that you be with us and we trust that you will be. And that your spirit watch over us and give us victory if that is your will. And we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, everybody, for being here today. Joy to have all of you as part of our daily devotion time. I enjoy this moment with you. Um, and so I hope that you'll come and join me tomorrow, 1145. Uh, until then, I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day and that you, whenever the rain starts, if it does, keep dry and don't, don't uh, get drowned out or anything like that. But, but otherwise, I do hope you have a wonderful day, a blessed day, and I'll look forward to visiting with you again tomorrow for our daily devotion. Have a great day.